Hey, what is up guys? Blunt Guts here. This is a Watcher of Rums video. Thank you so much for tuning into my channel. I do appreciate it. Please do like and subscribe if you do enjoy my content. And uh, I hope you're gonna enjoy this. I'm gonna be doing some testing today. We're gonna take a look at Bookkeeper and Archer uh, range and, and target selection based on uh, the new tower map that is gonna be coming in season five. We are able to test it right now on global servers, which is really nice. I'm, I, I've waited too long to do this in truth. You know, I, I know a lot of you have been sounding off in the comments and uh, I've just had some real life stuff going on uh, and I've just been kind of distracted. So unfortunately I haven't been able to dedicate as much time recently to Watcher of Realms as I would like, but uh, I'm gonna try to get this in and hopefully give you guys some insight into what I think about this new map and, uh, and, and how I think that archers and bookkeepers are gonna behave. So we're gonna do some testing. Uh, before I get to the testing though, I am going to start off and just identify a few spots on the, this new map where I think there are some kind of uh, unique tiles or tiles that are, are kind of important or ones that uh, could be potentially be powerful um, for, for placements. So I'm gonna do that. And that's going to obviously loop into the testing as well. Uh, after that, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do some testing. I'm gonna divide that testing into two halves. Uh, the first part, I'm gonna be taking a look at defenses on the right side of the map, basically towards the spawn point. And then uh, in the second half of the video, I am going to be looking at defenses set up on the left-hand side. I'm gonna try to be as thorough as possible. However, uh, there are just, uh, it's a, you know, there's a lot of deployment tiles on this map. I feel like, and maybe I'm wrong about this, but I feel like there's more on this one than there have been on any other one in the past. So uh, I'm going to be targeting the areas that I think it's most likely people are gonna be setting up defenses, but, you know, admittedly, I, I, I don't know exactly how this is going to manifest. These things often evolve over time, so I may miss some spots. Um, and I, I certainly think the other thing that should be noted is that the uh, the Garnet Guard, who is the exclusive Demon Soldier for Season 5, nobody's going to have him until probably two to four weeks into the season uh, is when you're going to start seeing him a lot more commonly. Before then, you're going to have to get really lucky because uh, they're going to drop five fragments each time, uh, potentially, when you do finish a Guild Wars match, but it's not guaranteed. And so you're going to need to get two drops, basically get lucky twice before you can actually uh, summon him and start using him in matches. So I think it's going to be a very small population of accounts that do have him initially. But over time, that will grow. And I, I think that due to his nature of specifically targeting platform units, that is going to change the way that uh, defenses are set up more than likely because you're going to have to kind of protect against that. You may start bringing in like a Mari or, or a, a, an HP-based healer or something like that that is built tanky in order to bait those Garnet Guard targets so that they can't take out your uh, your glass cannon platform units uh, like your mages and your marksmen and things like that. So uh, we'll have to see how that evolves, but we're gonna work with what we got right now. Let me back, I'm gonna show you some spots on this map that I think are gonna be important in season five. All right, guys, so let's take a look at this new map. I am in the new season five tower map right now. I've got an undeployed team. I'm gonna show you uh, the spots that I think are going to be important in season five. So the first spot, uh, or the first ones I'm gonna do are gonna be platform tiles. Uh, there are three different platform tiles that I think uh, are going to be um, kind of impactful on the way that we set up defenses. So I'm gonna identify those now. But first, let's just take a look at all the deployable platform tiles here. So there are, let's see, 10 different deployable platform tiles in this map. We've got these on the diagonal camera along the bottom, these three in the upper left-hand corner, and then three along the top on the right-hand side. So uh, that is a lot. I, I, I feel like that's more than we've had in the past. I might be wrong about that, but I do feel like that's more than we've had in the past. Now, there are three tiles in here, one by the spawn point and two by the soul crystal that I think are gonna be very important and uh, could be, potentially be uh, very powerful. I'm going to try to highlight them in my testing so that we can test and see exactly how powerful they may end up being. Uh, the first of which is this one up here, which is this odd one. So if you don't know, when, when you deploy units, there are two tiles that you can deploy units on. It's the one directly below the spawn point over here where Ingrid is, and then one tile in front of that. There's only two deployable spots on this map. We did have three last season. That was really nice. I felt like that gave us some more options for deployments as far as like facing different demon soldiers and things like that. But we don't have that option right now, so it's going to make it a little bit harder to uh, kind of time things. Uh, they're not going to be as many options as far as allowing, you know, deploying slower demon soldiers earlier and then having other ones catch up and things like that. So um, that may be an issue going forward. But this spot right here up on top, uh, now I've got Boreas up there right now. He would not be an ideal candidate for this. However, if you did bring in a long range marksman, like say, uh, 
uh, a mall or a Pelagios or Nyx or uh, Razak or you know, really any of the AOE marksmen that does have that extended range. They are going to have range that goes right down into the, the initial kind of corridor that your units are going to be pathing down when you deploy them, which is right right below, directly below where Boreas is right now. It's a three tiles down from that. Uh, alternately, if you do bring in a Piercer Lord with a strong Marksman up there with a standard Marksman range, so that standard three by four tile range that mo most single target Marksmen have, with the Piercer Lord, that's going to extend one tile further, making it a five by three tile range, meaning that they are going to be able to cover not not only uh, the first two tiles after the, the deployable points, but really the, the frontmost of the deployable tiles underneath the spawn point as well, which is just kind of nuts. Meaning that uh, I think in particular, Sargak is going to be a nightmare in this spot. If you've got a, a Piercer Lord in here, like if you've got a Racha or something like that, or, or Eovar even, you could drop in a Sargak up here and Sargak is gonna be hitting your heroes immediately. Uh, we're gonna test and see if we can't hit that tile before we have to go and make this turn. That might be a way to solve that. That might be a counter for it. But I kind of imagine that if they put this tile up there, probably not gonna work that way because otherwise this would just be a dead spot where nobody would deploy anything. So uh, I, I don't think that's the case. Um, as far as the other spots that I think are gonna be interesting, the first is going to be this one in the upper left-hand corner. It is set kind of two tiles back from this area where the Soul Crystal is. Uh, if you don't know, the path for Demon Soldiers in here, they go uh, immediately left when you deploy them, then they go up, then they go all the way over to the corner where Mari is, then down and then over. So they don't do any kind of like step pattern, like they don't come over here and then, like I'm doing with Ingrid right here, step down over this diagonal. No, it's instead they just go right across here and then down. So uh, there is no step down. But the interesting thing is you can place a tank right here. And my question is if you place a tank there, is Mari safe? All right, is Mari gonna be able to be hit? And uh, my guess is no, but we're gonna, we're gonna test it, we're gonna see. Uh, the other spot that I do think is interesting is this one down here where I am deploying Ingrid, which is also set two back from the, uh, from the path of the, uh, of the demon soldiers. However, unlike, unlike Mari up here in the corner, Nobody will ever get more than within within one tile of this one. So uh, that is going to be, I think, a relatively safe spot, assuming that you have uh, ground-based units deployed uh, anywhere in this three tile kind of set right here. I don't think that anybody's gonna be able to get to them. So we're gonna go in and, uh, and test all of these things and see, but uh, those are kind of my predictions. As far as ground tiles, I did just pull out Regulus so you could you probably saw them then, but there are two interesting ground tiles that I think I wanna take a look at. The first one is this one up here. Now you wouldn't want to deploy a tank there, uh, but if you do have a tank sitting down, kind of diagonally down to the left from Regulus, uh, you could deploy a long range fighter here that would have kind of three tiles to work with down here. This entire map seems to have been designed in order to kind of counter long range, single single width, uh, single tile width uh, ranges such as like, like Ingrid's right here or, or really any of the range fighters. Uh, I think are not going to be quite as effective in this map because there's no solid spot where they can take full advantage of their range. Uh, this is the only one that they potentially could. However, I, I just don't think that this is going to be a viable spot to deploy, but we are going to test and see uh, what the uh, what the story is. Uh, I think that the problem here is that even if you have a tank set right down here, uh, kind of down into the left from where Regulus is right now, that if somebody could very easily bomb you and and then you're going to get you're going to get blown up. Uh, and, and there's there are not that many here units in the game that can withstand that bombing. Maybe if you brought someone like a Carnelian in and you have the Carnelian down here and you can get the the uh, the unyielding from Carnelian up on the unit that's in that spot almost immediately. Uh, otherwise, I think it's gonna be very limited to uh, exceptionally tanky fighters. So maybe like an Elder built with HP percent, maybe a Jira, maybe um, maybe a Valderon, honestly, that would be good in that spot. But I think it's gonna be kind of similar to, there was a spot on the last map where uh, kind of, as you're going towards the Soul Crystal, before you kind of go up into that final, uh, final, you know, three tile range up and then over to get into the uh, into the Soul Crystal, there was a kind of a side out spot where I I did some testing on that in my season four range testing video, and um, it did not prove to be a very effective spot. Nobody really ended up using it. Uh, I think it was just too vulnerable, and I think this is going to be the same case with this. But we're going to test uh, with uh, archers and bookkeepers and see if they'll specifically target that uh, if the tanks are in different spots over here. So. We'll, we'll give that a go. We'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, th that spot. And then the other spot that I think that is interesting on the ground is this one right here. Uh, so this is kind of an odd duck spot as well. If you 
Remember what I was just saying, if you, I'll, I'll pull Carnelian off here so I can kind of show you visually, but Demon Soldiers are gonna path along here over this corner and then straight down. So they're never gonna have to go through where Regulus is right now. They'll never path through that tile, meaning that this tile right here where Regulus is deployed is uh, potentially a spot where you could deploy a fighter. I think you would need a, a fighter with kind of like a, a, a uh, an arrogance or a Zilla 2 range where they've got not just the extended range in front of them, but they've also got a couple tiles on either side of them where they are getting uh, getting some extra range on, on the sides as well. Uh, that would mean that if you have a tank to the left, like placed where I've got Carnelian right here, then the unit in the regular spot would be able to hit demon soldiers that get stacked up on whatever tank that is. So uh, that is is uh, some potential as well. So we're going to test this and see. Now, the problem with that is that, especially when we're talking about ranged units coming in, the ranged units are always going to target whoever's in this spot before the tank that hypothetically would be to the left of him. So I don't, I don't know that this is really a great option either, but... Uh, you know, maybe somebody can come up with some creative uses for it. Uh, it, it is just kind of an odd spot, and I think it, it is worth testing. So, uh, without further ado, let's get into the testing. I am going to uh, give a shout out to my buddy, my my guildmate uh, Zeki. He was he was kind enough to let me hop onto his account so I can move uh, his defense around so that I can create kind of a, what, what I hope is going to be a, 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 a hospitable testing environment, let's call it. So. <laughs> All right, so this is where we're going to do our initial testing. This is the setup we're going to use. Uh, we're going to move everybody around, obviously, but for right now, the main things that I want to take a look at, I want to see whether or not uh, Elowing gets targeted by the bookkeepers uh, or the archers, and I want to see if if Lily gets targeted by Elowing or the archers. I do have Vortex in there to keep Regulus uh up. I do think that he is going to take all the hits in this test, but uh, we're going to we're gonna take a look and we are going to see. So let's do bookkeepers first. They're going to path on in. Uh, then I'll go back out and I will do it with uh, with archers right after that. So are they going to hit Elowin? Nope, right onto Regulus. And they didn't turn and shoot at Lily. Maybe the archers will with some expanded range, but uh, I'm guessing that they will not, honestly. Uh, I don't think that they would have designed this map in a way where you could snipe somebody in in that way, but uh, maybe they did, who knows, you know. <laughs> I feel like Moonton does all sorts of stuff that I wouldn't think would be likely. So uh, let's drop in archers right after that, and let's see uh, what happens here. Do we have a shot at Lily? Nope, right onto Regulus. Um, maybe when they get to the bottom corner here, maybe they'll turn and they'll whack Elowin, but I don't believe that they will. Uh, my understanding is the way that the AI works in this, they are going to always target the closest hero uh, in, in that is within their range. So in this case, that the game determined it to be Regulus. Uh, I do want to see when they get up here, are they going to turn? No, they are not. All right, so next test up, we've got Elowin in the exact same spot. We've also got Lily up here uh, in, in the same spot. I did move Vortex forward and I moved Regulus back one tile. Uh, main thing I'm looking for here is I want to see if Lily or if Elowin does get targeted. Um, we might have to do another test if Vortex gets targeted because uh, then we, we the question would be, well, would they have targeted Lily if Vortex wasn't there? But uh, I'm guessing that's not going to be the case still, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, question is, is it better to move Regulus back or not? I, 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 I don't know. Uh, and I guess also will will the the distance allow them to take full advantage of the range, and will they will they attack somebody else? So uh, thought that we might see them turn and shoot there, but a look at that. So Elwin is getting hit now by the bookkeepers. That is interesting to note. Uh, now who's this going to go on? And Vortex is taking hits there as well. So you know what? I am going to come back here. I will move Vortex out of range there, and we're going to see if that changes anything for the bookkeepers at least. But let's drop in the archers, and we'll see what they do as well. So uh, I think their range should allow them to hit Lily right here, but it doesn't look like they're going to. So is what it is. Right on to Regulus in that case. And they didn't even take a shot at Elowin, which is kind of odd. Uh, I, I have to wonder if it has something to do with like the attack interval timing or something like that. Um, they are going on to Vortex as well. So we will do this test again with Vortex in a different spot. Uh, I did not see Lily get hit at all. So uh, there is that. But uh, I wonder if Lily might get hit once we take Vortex out of the equation. Uh, so that, that'll that be interesting. Um, but it seems like if you do have the tank set back like you do right there, then the spot where Elowin is probably a no deploy zone and also the spot where uh, where Vortex is is probably someplace that you cannot deploy. So uh, good to note. So we are back in. So I have moved Vortex back. So we're kind of uh, back to the, the same setup as we did in the first test, except for the fact that Regulus is one tile back. So uh, we're going to drop in our bookkeeper here. 
Uh, we, we should know that they're not going to target Lily. Let's see if they target Elowin again, though. I am curious to see if that's repeatable or if that was some kind of RNG or something like that. Interesting. Uh, I'm going to drop another one just, just out of curiosity. I wonder if I drop him on the front tile, is, is he going to attack Elowin? I would imagine they would, right? Because the attack interval shouldn't... Yeah, so they're, they're, they're both going to attack Elowin. So that, that is good to note. Uh, let's also drop in our archer here and let's watch the archer in the bottom corner and see uh, what they are going to do. Uh, we know that they're not going to attack Lily at the base here, and they're on Regulus now, which leads me to believe that they are going to continue attacking Regulus regardless. Uh, I, I don't think that that's going to change, but maybe when and when they get one tile forward and they're, they're right about to make the turn, maybe they will switch onto Lily. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Nope, no shots at Lily uh, to this point. All on to Regulus. So, uh, yeah, that is a safe spot up here, and that's going to be a nightmare for anybody with a really strong single-target marksman. I, I think, you know, uh, Silas is is not going to be the best option up there, although he, he will be a nuisance, uh, no question about it. He's going to be able to cover uh, three tiles in this bottom lane plus uh, two tiles on this side lane after they make the turn to go up. So uh, he, that, that that's going to be a nightmare for anybody. Uh, I, I think Sargak is the one that is going to be truly a a, uh, a hell spawn in that spot because he is going to be able to um he does really good damage consistently whereas silas is ultimate limited sargak is somebody that is going to just i mean obviously more damage during his ultimate but he is going to continue to just pepper your heroes with heavy damage throughout ultimate or not and uh and that's going to be a big big problem uh so if you've got sargak Congratulations. I think you're going to do very well in this upcoming season, at least until we get the Rock Curlers. Once we get the Garnet Guards, I think that that is going to probably put an end to this. But, uh, you know, again, we're going to have to see how how that how they test out. I'll have to put out another video with the Garnet Guards when that does happen, because the question is, what's their targeting priority going to look like? Uh, how do you manipulate them so that they attack Lily in that spot or the spot where Lily is, you know, uh, where a prospective marksman could be? So. I don't know. We'll have to see. All right, so next test up, I have moved Regulus forward. We've got Elowen kind of catty corner to uh, to him right there. And so we're going to see if Elowen gets targeted here at all. I don't think she will. I think it'll all go on to Regulus. And since the bookkeeper splash damage, it's kind of a cross pattern from the targeted units. So one tile above, one tile below, one tile to the left, and one tile to the right of Regulus. Elowen should not take any damage from that. But we'll see if at any point she's he's going to turn and attack her directly. Uh, don't think so though based on yeah, so he, he's he's flush up against her. That is not going to happen um, Let's uh, let's drop in archers and see if it's the same thing or not I would imagine it should be but we've already seen some differences a la the bookkeeper attacking uh, Attacking Regulus so it looks like uh, that is not gonna be the case either because if he's already on Regulus I don't think there's a point where he's gonna turn and attack Elwin, but uh, Let's let's uh, let's 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 see what happens here yeah, I think as soon as he moves up onto this tile, there will be no question. Yeah, he's not going to turn and attack Elowen. So uh, that is uh, that is that. So it seems like if you do have a tank in the regular spot, then that should make Elowen safe. Uh, also of note that when we did have Regulus in this spot before and Elowen was down uh, and to the left one tile, Elowen was not getting attacked by either of the ranged units then. So I think that the preferred deployable spot for your your kind of uh, your frontline tank is going to be where Regulus is right now. I don't think you're going to want to move him. Uh, I'm going to come back. I'm going to do a couple of tests with a fighter in the tile directly above where the demon soldiers are right now. We're going to see how that impacts and see if the demon soldiers are going to attack uh, that unit when Regulus is either in this spot or the spot behind that. And, uh, and then we'll move on to some left side uh, defenses and see how vulnerable those tiles are to attacks. All right, guys, we are back in here. I've got the same positioning as we did uh, before, uh, with the exception of the fact that I've got Valderon in here right now. The uh, reason I brought in Valderon is, uh, one, I feel like we can we can test and we can see whether or not he is tanky enough to survive up there. So that, that is uh, one benefit. I've also got some exploding bugs in here. I think I'll toss them at Valderon at the end there. Uh, they're gonna impact on Regulus, but since they are gonna impact in front of Regulus, that means that Valderon will be in the explosion range. Uh, he should get hit. We're going to see if he gets taken out. Um, I don't think he will, because I think that he he saves his life a number of times. So I think that and unless maybe the bookkeepers and the archers uh, kill him enough times that uh, he's he's run out of lives. <laughs> uh, but anyway, let's get the uh, 
Let's get the bookkeepers in here. Let's see if they're going to attack Valderon at any point before they attack Regulus. And then after we do this one, we'll come back. We'll move Regulus back one tile, and we'll see if that changes anything. Uh, so as you can see here, there we go, right onto Regulus. Um, we'll see if when they get to the top of this, this path before they turn to the left, whether or not that is going to result in... Uh, in a shot at Valderon, and it looks like it just did. It looks like it just did. So uh, one shot at the the unit up there. Now Valderon took it like a champ, and you got Lily up here keeping him alive. But theoretically, you could have a healer up in this tile, two tiles above where Elowin is right now, and that would save them as well. So let's drop in our archer, and let's see if they uh, if they behave similarly. Uh, they should start targeting Regulus. Yeah, right about there. Uh, and uh, I'm sure they're going to stick on him until they get a little closer. I'll speed it up. Uh, as they they just they take forever, especially when they're pausing every two seconds to take a shot. So uh, let's see if they're gonna turn and take a shot at Valderon in this spot as well. Um, yep, there we go. So one shot, and then left and straight onto the tank after that. So you know, I, I mean, I think maybe if you had two of them deployed at the same time, and it wasn't somebody that was super tanky like Valderon, you'd probably take them out that way. Um, but you know, you never really know. Let's drop in some bugs, some bugs. Let's see if they're gonna if they're gonna kill Valderon here. Uh, they didn't. Lily saved. Let's see. I'm dropping another set and just see if we can take him out. Uh, just because I want to kill him, I'm angry at him. And see, he just took that like a champ. Valderon's so good, so good. I think he would be a great use for this scenario. Uh, other heroes, again, I, I think I gave you a, a kind of a, an abbreviated list there, but like I think Elder, maybe I think maybe. Um, Maybe Jira, uh, Abomination potentially could do it. You know, you're going to need somebody with some base HP, and you're probably going to benefit from putting uh, some HP stacked gear on them. So at the at minimum, you know, find your pieces of gear, kind of like you did with Guild Boss Two, where you've got HP percent substats, uh, and, and that might be a good compromise. You can actually get quite a bit more HP on some of these fighters if you do it that way. So that might help out. Uh, that, that's an option. That's definitely an option. And again, like I said before, it's one of the few spots where you can face them down, and they can. Uh, and they have a long lane to kind of take advantage of their range. Now, Valderon's not really in that category because he only has a two-tile range, but uh, somebody like Arrogance or something like that uh, could potentially do that. Um, so, something to keep in mind. All right, so I've moved Regulus back one tile. I also moved Elwyn up because uh, we know that she was taking shots when she was one tile down below, so I, I wanted to move her uh, up above Regulus there. Let's see if uh, either the bookkeepers or the archers are going to target Valderon first in this instance. I think they might, just visually speaking, it looks like Valderon might end up being closer at this point. Uh, so we'll see. Yep, there we go. So that's not going to be ideal. I think if you do want to deploy a unit in the spot that Valderon is right now, that you are going to need to uh, to put a tank in the spot right in front of Regulus. Uh, I assume that the archers are going to do the exact same thing, but we're going to deploy them to see. Uh, and yeah, you can see, I think until they're actually stuck on Regulus, they are going to continue. Yeah, so now now that the bookkeeper is up there, he will continue to, uh, to attack Regulus. But before that, he was stuck right on Valderon. Uh, interestingly, the archers are taking shots at Regulus. I took one shot at him. I guess because they have longer range, that must be it. But now they're back on Valderon, and I assume it's going to be the same kind of pattern as uh, before, where they are going to uh, turn and go over to the left. And as soon as they are on the tile right in front of Regulus, that they should be in a spot where uh, where they're only attacking Regulus. So one more step forward. Yeah, and now they're going to start attacking Regulus. Okay. Cool. Good to know. Uh, I'll be back in a second. I'm going to go reconfigure this defense on the left-hand side, and we're going to test some of uh, the tiles that I, I mentioned before. We're going to see how, uh, how this compares, so I'll be right back with that. All right, guys, we are back. So what I've done here, uh, we've got Regulus in this spot right here, which is the furthest point forward that you can deploy a tank. Uh, outside of this lane. You could deploy one to the right, but then he wouldn't be blocking anything, so there's really no point in deploying there. And uh, as I was setting this up, I was trying to think to myself, do I want to put Valderon in a spot over here? Uh, and I don't think that I'm going to do any testing on that. Uh, reason being that uh, I think it's it's pretty uh, obvious that he is going to, that whoever is pathing up there, the range fighters are all going to key in on Valderon until they get into this upper corner, just like we saw in the last test. Until they're right on top of Regulus, they are going to continue to attack the uh, closest unit, which in this case would be Valderon. So 
Um, what I'm looking for in this test, I've got uh, Vortex down and diagonal from Regulus. We've also got Lily up in this uh, top left-hand corner spot that I identified in the intro. And I want to see if at any point either Vortex or Regulus are going to get attacked. Now, I do know that when, you know, we saw that when the, uh, when the bookkeeper was over here, that he, he, even when we had Regulus up in this spot up here, he was attacking the, uh, he, he was taking a shot at Vortex. All right, I think it was actually over here where I've got the bookkeeper right now. So uh, we know that that's the case already. So the Vortex should be taking some shots here, but really the question is how long do they stick on Vortex? At what point should they sw switch to Regulus? Um, is it sooner, is it later? And are they gonna take a shot at Lily when they get up into this corner? Those are the questions that I want answers to. So uh, i drop in our bookkeeper. I'm gonna put on two times speed. They should take a shot at Vortex right about here. There we go. And uh, we're gonna see if that, I think they should do it again right here, right? You'd think so, yep. There's another shot right there. And uh, let's see if, when they're gonna switch onto Regulus. There we go. So right when they right when they cross onto this tile right here, that's when they switch over to Regulus. Two tiles in the north of where Vortex is right now. That's good to note. Let's uh, drop in the archers. Let's see if they do the same thing. They, again, should take shots at Vortex, even though they didn't when we tested this before with, uh, with a different positioning. Because there's no tank here to draw their fire, uh, Vortex is still well within their range, and you can see they're actually, they, they're, he's in their range for longer. So uh, that tile is more vulnerable to archers than it is to bookkeepers. Uh, we had some solid travel time up here with the bookkeeper where he was not attacking that tile. So we're gonna see, uh, we're gonna see what happens here. Uh, but I imagine it's gonna be a similar thing when they cross over onto this tile right here. That's when they should start targeting Regulus. And there it is. So you can see their, their, their toes were just were just on that tile and they, they turned and targeted Regulus. So uh, very consistent there. Now I didn't see Lil, uh, the bookkeeper turn and target Lily at all. And it doesn't look like the archer did either. So uh, I, I wouldn't expect that to be an issue. So that tile should be relatively safe with a tank deployed in this position. Uh, that is good to note. Uh, I'm gonna come back. I am going to uh, move Vortex. I'll leave Lily and I'm gonna move Regulus back. And we're gonna see if that changes anything uh, as far as Lily targeting. I think at that point, Lily will be exposed. So uh, we're gonna have to see uh, how that works, but I'll be right back with that. All right, so we're back in here. I have moved Regulus back. Let's drop in a bookkeeper and see uh, if they're gonna target Lily and, and how much they're gonna target Lily. Uh, that's the question. Uh, you know, I think if they, we can get away with them only doing like one shot at her, then this might be someplace that you could still drop in. Oh, look at that. Straight to Regulus. Straight to Regulus there. So uh, now they're gonna take a shot at Lily. Okay. And are they gonna turn back and do another one? No, nope. only one shot at Lily. So if you have a tanky platform unit there, definitely at least against bookkeepers, that is a viable solution it looks like. I'm gonna drop in uh, the archers here. We'll put on two times speed and let them get, uh, get a little further along in their pathing. And we'll see when they start to shoot. It should be somewhere on this tile, I would imagine. And it is, but it's Regulus that's getting hit again. So uh, straight to Regulus, straight to Regulus, <laughs> straight to Regulus. And uh, now we're on Lily. We get one shot against Lily there. Two shots from the archers, that's good to note. But then they turn and now they're gonna be back on Regulus. So as soon as they make that turn, both of these units, the bookkeeper and the archer did turn and target the tank, even in this position. So again, if you've got a tanky unit up there, you could potentially put somebody up there, even when you have the tank set back deep. Uh, that would really remove them from any kind of AOE damage as well. There's no danger of being bombed or anything like that. So uh, that is good to note. Uh, that's good to note. I think maybe like a tanky Mari or uh, an HP based healer or uh, just, you know, just a healer really, I think in general would probably be okay uh, to take one shot from them. But well, as I'm thinking about that, I only deployed one of these units. Um, if I had deployed two of them, I think that two shots uh, certainly four shots total from the archers probably would have taken down Lily and uh, and even a combined two shot from two bookkeepers would have taken them down as well. So uh, that's my guess, but you know, obviously you can do some testing on your own and see if your, if your units are tanky enough. I haven't really done enough tanking where I've put, or testing, excuse me, where I've put healers or other units in guardian gear to really see how, uh, how tanky they are. But I do know that people have effectively used Mari in vulnerable positions in the past, so certainly should be possible, particularly with legendary healers, because they should have higher base stats and therefore higher HP totals than uh, than, a, than a Mari would. So uh, if you've got some good 
healer statted guardian gear, uh, then, then then that might be a move. Uh, that might be a move. Uh, you could you could draw fire up there, uh, and, and really any range unit your your uh, your opponent wants to deploy is going to be drawn to them and take some pressure off of your main defense. So uh, yeah, that, that's a possibility. In any case, guys, uh, I'm going to do a little bit more movement. We're going to see if we can't test some other spots. I think we've kind of covered what this spot where Lily is is going to look like. Although maybe maybe I move. Regulus, one to the left, and I think then all the damage will be on the healer, uh, but I'll try to test something else out while we're doing that as well. All right, so we're back in here. I have moved Regulus back one spot to the left. I've also moved Vortex back one spot as well, because I am sure that Vortex is going to take some hits if Vortex is one tile forward in that case. So uh, that is something to, uh, to keep in mind, but uh, I think Lily is going to take the brunt of these attacks, but the other thing I'm curious about is whether or not we're going to see any shots against Elowen at this point, or if they are all going to go on to the tanks. So uh, let's drop in our bookkeeper. I will speed things up. Uh, we should start to see some shots at Lily somewhere around this tile right, right here where I've got the archer. So let's see. There we go. Right as soon as they cross that tile, that is when we start seeing some shots at Lily. There's two shots in this case. Uh, is it going to turn around and shoot her again? Nope. Straight onto Regulus at that point. Uh, and the question is, when he gets to the bottom here, is he going to take a shot at Elowen? Which I think he is. He is. So this is not going to be a great spot for uh, for Elowen. Uh, in, in my mind, I think, or really whoever it is that you want to place there, they're going to have to be tanky enough to take a shot from range units if you are going to put them there. Otherwise, they are going to get get taken down. And I think that's most units in the game, unless you do build them tanky, like I said before. Let's drop in uh, the archers and see if they behave the exact same way, which I kind of expect them to. Uh, they'll probably start shooting Lily a little bit earlier, would be my guess. There we go. Lily gets shot. A bunch. Lily's getting shot a whole bunch. So that, and now Lily goes down from one archer too. So I think that's a statement right there. That tile up there, if you've got the tank set back here, Probably not going to be ideal. Uh, probably not going to be ideal. Um, I did not see if they attacked Elowen. I think they did, but uh, I, I just want to be sure about that before I move on to the next test. So I'm going to deploy a second one, and I'll, I'll slow it down and uh, and try to shut my big yap while, while, uh, while there's something important going on that we need to watch. So uh, let's see here. They are scrolling down. Go on. Still on to Regulus. Still on to Regulus. Let's see. When they cross into this next tile, are they going to take a shot here before we run out of time? Come on, archers. Oh, and they got stunned. No. Go. Turn. Take a shot. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Uh, that was a shot at L1 right there. So uh, that is confirmed, but still just one shot. So, you know, it depends. Uh, if you got things properly set up, that could be an option. I'm going to go shift things around one more time, and we're going to take a, a look at that bottom tile that I pointed out in the intro and see if... Uh, if that's vulnerable at all as well. All right, guys. So I think this is actually going to be the last test here. Uh, I think we, in any other position, if there is a tank either two tiles in front of Elowen or to the right over here, they're going to take all the shots. There's really no no risk to whether or not, uh, or a question in my mind anyway, about whether or not they are going to target Elowen. But uh, I, I did want to test this out right here and just see if maybe when they're coming down, maybe when they're in, this tile over here where I've got the exploding bugs right now, if they will target L1 at that point. I still think they're going to be on Regulus, but there's a question. I also left uh, our Vortex in over here. I want to see if maybe when the units are right here, if they're going to target Vortex instead of Regulus. I think they will at that point, but um, let's uh, let's drop them in. I'll put in two times speed to get them a little bit closer, and then I'll slow it down so we can get an eye in on what they are, uh, what they're going to do. Uh, other than that, I don't really have any other questions about the range on this map, but uh, you know, maybe you do, and I've missed something. You can let me know. Now, I think they're going to target Vortex right here. Would be my guess. Yep. So Vortex is getting hits right there, and he's going to continue to get hits. I think until they get down to this tile right here, and then they should switch onto Regulus. Um, let's see. And now are they going to be on Regulus? Yep, that's what I thought. Uh, now, are they going to turn at any point and target Elowen? They shouldn't, I wouldn't think. So Elowen is safe in that spot. That is good to note because this is well out of range of any kind of bug explosion that could possibly occur. That means that this tile is uh, effectively, so long as you have a tank in one of these three tiles that is two, like the tile that Regulus is and the two to the right, that, that is going to be a safe spot where Elowen is right now. There should not be any targeting by range units of that spot. So uh, effectively, 
that's going to be something that uh, they're either going to have to kill the tank in order to target it, or they're going to have to work around it. So, good to note. Let's uh, let's drop in our archers and let's see if we get similar results with that. I'll put it on two times speed and uh, just speed them up. But I think we're probably going to see the exact same thing. Would be my guess. So. They should start shooting right about now. Yep, and there we go. Their Vortex got hit. Let's see uh, if they're going to continue to stick on Vortex until they get down into this tile where I've got the exploding bugs right over here. Uh, let's see if that remains true. Still on Vortex there. Still on Vortex there. And now they're on Regulus as soon as they path onto that tile. I don't think that they're going to turn and hit Elowin, but uh, we'll wait and we'll see. And... Uh, see here is it gonna happen is it gonna happen no it's not gonna happen they're too close to regulus so yeah that is that all right guys well i do hope that you enjoyed the testing i think there's a few conclusions that we can draw here one is that uh this spot up here where i've got boreas right now is going to be safe for the most part so long as you are deploying a tank right here uh, i think you should be good to deploy up there i think uh, i have to go back and review the tape but i do believe that even move back one i don't think that there were there was more than one shot that was taken at boreas uh at the boreas tile uh right now so that that is something to keep in mind um if you do have your tank set back one tile that may mean that you do need to uh, build that unit on the Boreas platform uh, a little bit tankier, uh, but I do think that that is something that you know we, we can play around with. I think that my conclusion anyway is that I do think, again, like I said earlier in the video, that a piercer up here with a piercer lord, maybe Regulus there, maybe a Racha right behind him with uh, a Sargak or something like that up where Boreas is, is going to be very, very powerful, I think. Uh, I think that is going to really be uh, tough to deal with when you are dropping units and they're immediately getting hit. Uh, it's going to make it hard to stack things up. It's going to make it hard to swarm. Um, unless you can drop the swarm all at once, if that's the case, then, then you might be able to do that. I think the other option is that you know, if you do have an AOE unit up there, if you can drop a tanky unit in and get them in front of where Regulus is right now, so in this tile where my mouse is, uh, then that is something that uh, could potentially work as well because then you draw fire away from the deployment spot uh, and, and the unit that is up there will be targeting kind of closer to the tank. Now, it's not going to solve the problem completely because you need a unit that's going to be tanky enough to sit up there, but uh, it will give you some relief if you are trying to stack up a bunch of units and you don't want them to immediately be taken damage before they get a chance to even do anything. So uh, that is going to be a problem. I think generally after looking at this, I do think that the right side is probably where I would think that these stronger defenses are going to be set up. It's very close to the spawn point, meaning that just like I was saying a minute ago, that it's going to be hard to uh, to do more than deploy and have them have your demon soldiers immediately be uh, interacting with the enemy team. Uh, it makes timing much much more difficult. It doesn't give you the opportunity to kind of deploy slower units and then have faster units catch up and then have them all hit the defense at the same time. It's going to be tough that way. So uh, less options for attacking when they are on the right-hand side. That said, I don't know that this is going to be a really hard map to deal with. Aside from that piercer option up in the Berea spot that I was just talking about, I don't think that this is going to be a map that is going to be all that difficult. And from what I've heard from, from folks uh, in my guild, there have been a lot of successful attacks. A lot of defenses have been set up. They, they have not had a lot of difficulty with. Now, uh, I think that it is early on. And like many of these things, I've said in the past, I'll say it again now, uh, over time, you know, ingenuity and, 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 and group think tends to find solutions to problems. So I, I do think that as the season progresses, defenses are going to get more and more uh, difficult to take on. But for the first month or so, there's probably going to be a lot of... Uh, a lot of inefficiency in these defenses, and I do think that you are going to uh, be able to take advantage of that if you are aware of uh, some of these things that we tested in this video, so you have a better idea of when your range attackers can hit. Um, as far as the left-hand side, uh, we the, I think the big thing that we discovered is that, well, this tile where I'm placing Ingrid and this tile down here where I am placing Carnelian are going to be relatively safe so long as you have a tank deployed either here where I've got Arrogance right now or... Uh, one tile up. And I think this is where I've got arrogance right now is going to be the preferable spot. Reason being that that completely can, it protects the tile that uh, that Ingrid is on. Uh, that, that, that should be your priority. I think at the end of the day is making sure that, that unit does not die. Otherwise, you are going to have to cover them with a healer. So um, uh, or build them very tanky and one or the other. So, you know, we, we all have to make compromises when we're building our defenses. So something to keep in mind. Uh, beyond that, I think moving, uh, say, like, back further to the spawn point. Imagine if Arrogance was the tank. Arrogance is right there. Uh, 
I, that is not going to be an advantageous position, I don't think. Although the th the good thing to note, though, is that Carnelian in a completely safe spot, even if the tank is set all the way back there. I think the only one you might try that with is Cyrus. And even if you were going to try it with Cyrus, I think what you'd really want to do is you'd want to move Cyrus right here and then face him towards the Soul Crystal so that his skeletons uh, have two tiles to spawn on. And he's going to be a nightmare in this defense yet again, whether he's in the spot where Regulus is right now, or he's in the spot where Arrogance is right here. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to be bemoaning not having Cyrus for yet another season, it seems like. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting started on this map. I think next up is going to be figuring out effective ways to attack, so I'll probably make some, some videos on bombing and things like that over the next few days. That is going to be my goal. Uh, but... Please do sound off in the comments. Let me know what you think. Did I miss anything? You know, I may have tested something that you you want to see, uh, but I didn't include it in this video uh, because I didn't feel like it it merited you know taking up some screen time. But I may have the answer for you. So if you're curious about something, feel free to ask it, and I will do my best to answer it. Or maybe you give me an idea for another video that I'm going to make in the future because I will have to revisit this once we get the Garnet Guards and we are able to test out their range and their AI. So I'm going to be doing another video like this at some point in the future. Uh, Appreciate you all for your patience as I took my sweet ass time to, to, to get this together and put it out, but I do hope it was worth the wait. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Please do like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. I'll catch you all next time.